So one thing else I want to get to is back behind this waterfall, if you'll notice, close to the fence, there's dirt up on this fence. And you'll notice over here, we have all this dirt up high on this brick. The dirt's high up on this electrical. It's up at well above this fence. I would say that the dirt level is about four inches too high here. And when all this water was saturated, you know, this brick started to get wet. You can see that it's a little bit of damage right here. And that fence is already starting to rot. So I'm gonna get a shovel and I'm gonna kind of establish where grade could have been here to help prevent uh, the damage to the fence and the risk to the electrical right there. So you can see I'm down pretty good. It's amazing that the dirt's actually still moist. That's a little surprising. So this fence, I mean, this is at least eight inches too much of soil back here. You can see how the, the fence is already being compromised from, from dirt being on it. When you get dirt on there, moisture collects in there. It also makes it susceptible to uh, termites start to get in there. And um, I'm sure, sure long-term this is not a good, good effect. So this whole section actually should have been down a little bit. Somewhere, maybe not, maybe not a complete eight inches, but definitely too much soil is against this fence. I wanna take a close look along this whole back end of the wall and uh, show you how when any irrigation or rain, if we ever get rain in California, hits along this back edge, everything just works its way right into the pond, which is not um, a great design because we don't want any runoff coming into the pond. We wanna try and control water and get it to run away from the pond. I definitely don't like uh, dirt this close to an electrical box. I think this electrical box would have been better served maybe a couple inches taller. I usually like to get them off the ground at least a foot, maybe 18 inches. This brick is beautiful and it's a shame to cover that much of the brick. So you can see I'm, I'm removing quite a bit of soil back in through here. Without running a laser level uh, from this side to where the where the concrete's at. I can't give you an exact amount of inches that should or should not be back here, but I can tell you there's definitely too much dirt back here and too close to the electrical as well. Pay close attention to this edge right here where the fence is and where the pond is, and I'm gonna show you how everything's pitched into the pond. Check it out. Here's a spot on the fence line where the dirt is not too bad. I think the dirt is approximately an inch too tall right here, and over there it's probably four inches too tall. Now what the contractor did is he left too much dirt on the property through here. As he was digging, he left a little bit too much dirt here, and as I said, it's um, jeopardizing the fence. But more importantly, you'll see this pitch, this is about level right here. So you see that? This whole side is pitched into the pond, and that means every time, like I said, there's uh, irrigation or rainwater runoff, it comes right into the pond, makes the pond dirty, uh, makes it really hard to water your plants, and uh, ultimately, we, we want to make sure all the water sheds away from the pond. Let's go check out the waterfall down here. We're at the back of the property where the larger waterfall is, and I wanted you to take a second to look at this magnificent stone that's right here. It's probably my favorite feature on the entire pond. As we look closer, I see um, it looks like some, some detail work was done after the fact here where some foam is exposed. And um, I imagine the water's rushing through here, coming down and making a, a jaunt here and then pushing over. But I believe the way this, the stone is foamed in here, we had some water movement here originally that they had to correct. And it's just a really close call right here because if they had the water, more of that wicking effect is happening here where dirt is actually all the way down to the liner touching the foam. 
And then I imagine you got some of that capillary action right here where the, the liner, actually the liner's edge is right here. So you can see this is, this is part of that capillary action where the dirt is coming in into the liner and it, it acts as a sponge and it starts to suck the water out. But you can see this edge right here is bothersome. This, this piece of liner is just cut too short. So if any water would move in through here, uh, this, is, this area was certainly gonna be saturated. So that's why I believe some of the foaming that they did up and through here looks to me like it's an afterthought, like a repair to try and push water the other way and not come out here. Okay, so what I have here um, is it an ecosystem waterfall filter. This particular model is rated for about 2,500 gallons, uh, 2,500 gallon pond. And it has a couple of pads that go in there. And then a couple of small bags of lava rock. So, I mean, this is, these are really lightweight. They're not that much. Probably could have used a little bit more lava rock in there. But ultimately the pond uh, is roughly 5,000 gallons, 4,500 to 5,000 with a 2,500 gallon uh, ecosystem filter on there. So I believe this is undersized for the system and uh, this this pond would have had a lot a lot of aquatic plants to, to help it out uh, but ultimately it's too small. I want to take a look at here I have an electrical box back here which is fine. The problem I'm seeing is the walls falling apart and there's actually some of the rocks that were used to support this berm are falling over. They're putting some pressure on the fence and actually I see the electrical box is pushed this way, so it's definitely putting some pressure on that. Let's take a look at that. So this, this rock is applying pressure to this electrical box, and this one's applying pressure to that fence. I feel bad just leaving it there. I'm probably gonna have to move that rock. I just don't wanna see any pressure on this fence because the fence is already jeopardized on some of the areas with, with dirt. That one will have to stay. It looks like they used some foam to kind of fill in some of the cracks. But it probably would have, they would have served better if they would have used the dry stack retaining wall block through here.